just took 20 years off my life, just from 50 calories a day too much. The first principle is moderate c caloric restriction in an environment of micronutrient excellence. Here we have the American diet, yet the secret formula for a long life is in your healthy life expectancy and, the, and your great well-being and mental, you know, mental aptitude and your memory and your intelligence and your emotional outlook on life is all dependent on the micronutrient per calorie density of the diet you eat through life. Pretty straightforward and simple. So let's assume for a minute, let's test this out, because I've said this is scientifically proven with every study ever done, animals live longer, they don't get cancer. So what if I just ate 50 calories a day too much over what you've determined with a calorimeter and all the physiological and biological testing, we figured out how exactly how many calories I needed to maintain my perfect weight, about 9% body fat, you know, 150 pounds, the same weight I've been my whole life since I'm 17 years old. If I, so how many calories do I need given the exercise I do? Figured it out, 50 calories a day over that. What's going to happen to me? Well, 50 calories a day times th extra times 365 days a year, that's a big number. That's about three or four pounds extra a year. Over 10 years, that's 30 pounds. I just took 20 years off my life, just from 50 calories a day too much. One extra bite of a bagel, too much a day. How are you going to know how much to eat? What if, though, on the other hand, I consumed 50 calories a day too little? Under what was scientifically determined, I needed to maintain my lean body mass. Then what would happen to me? Would I lose weight, become anorexic, drop to 130 pounds, lose all my muscle strength, not be able to ski moguls and do 20 chin-ups and 100 push-ups? Would I lose all that strength and, and athletic ability? Would I, would I shrink down? Would I become, would I, my muscles and bones get weak and I develop osteoporosis? What would happen to me? Tell me. If I get 50 calories a day too little, what would happen? What? I, he says, I, I would get too skinny. Would I get too skinny, maybe? What do you guys think? No, of course. Right, you'd live long. Here's what would happen. My body would try to maintain its present weight because I'm already at my ideal weight. So my body would lower its metabolic rate. It would lower its body temperature. My temperature would become cooler. My respiratory quotient would lower. The amount of, that means the calories lost through breathing would be adjusted. So I'd lose less calories through breathing, and my thyroid would function a little slower. So my metabolic rate would slow down so I wouldn't lose weight. And because my metabolic rate is slowing, I'm aging much slower. I'd maintain my youthfulness longer. My bones and muscles would stay stronger. I'd be able to maintain my muscle strength and my power into my later years. And that mild degree of caloric restriction would keep me in much better health and more youthful and protect me against these later life diseases that afflict everybody else just by moderately restricting calories a little bit. Did you follow that? And here's what I'm saying, here's what I'm telling you today, is that the mechanism via which you can comfortably eat a little calories, a few calories less, so 25 to 50 calories less each day with comfort, is by eating a diet rich in micronutrients. Because the more micronutrients you eat, the less calories you desire. And when you don't, and your diet is micronutrient insufficient, you become a calorie consuming monster. You can't stop over consuming calories. You become an overeating machine because your diet is too low in nutrients. So let's pause this presentation for a minute and let's do a, sci let's do a scientific test on this audience right here. So I want all of you, half of you on this side of the room, to line up in the back of the room and Make believe, but make believe. I'll line up on this side of the room, the other half line up on that side of the room, and this side's gonna come up here on this buffet, and I'll put a delicious buffet, a healthy buffet of a meal right here in the front, and you're gonna make a nice line and come to eat, and eat at this meal. But those on the left side of the room, as you're waiting in line to get your plates filled, I'm gonna give you an apple to eat while you're waiting on line. And as you eat that 65 calories of apple, your brain and your body will be, get the message that you're consuming 65 calories of fiber and nutrients. And when you get here to consume your food, and when you sit down to eat the food, we're going to track exactly how much calories you cooked on your plate and how much you ate. And I can guarantee you that this group eating that apple will eat 65 calories less on the average because they had that apple and it turned down their apostat accordingly. Did you follow that? Now this line on the left side of the room over here, or my left, your right, 
you're going to be in the line over here, and I'm going to give you a tablespoon of olive oil at 120 calories, and you're going to come up here to eat your food. And I can guarantee you when we measure the amount of food you eat, you would have not reduced your caloric consumption by those 120 calories. As a matter of fact, those 120 calories from the olive oil would have zero impact on the calories you chose to eat in the front of the room. So you'd be essentially consuming 120 calories more because you had that oil on the way up here. Matter of fact, because oil, because there's no fiber and no nutrients in it, it doesn't have, it's because it absorbs so rapidly in the, in the bloodstream, it doesn't have any ability to ratchet down the appetite. It's absorbed too rapidly with no fiber and micronutrients present. Matter of fact, if we mix the oil in the food, it would make you consume more than 120 calories more. Put a couple of tablespoons on that food, and maybe you consume 240 calories, but you're not just consuming 240 extra calories, you're consuming 360 extra calories. Because you put the oil in the food, it makes you want to eat more of the food. It turns, where the apple turned down the apostat, the oil turned up the apostat made you consume more calories. Any food you can possibly think that could damage your health in life more than oil, you can tell me what it is, because there's nothing that increases the calories you consume each day more than putting oil on your food. Nothing. Any oil, by the way. So don't raise your hand and ask me, what about flaxseed oil, what about coconut oil, what about this kind of oil, sesame oil, blah, blah, blah. Don't, don't ask me what kind of oil. All oil has no fiber and no significant micronutrient load. It's all empty calorie stuff that turns up the apostat. Okay? Might be good for a person who's, who's wasting away to nothing and can't consume calories. It's really only 88% of people in America that are overweight. You know, because we tell American authorities tell us that, that two-thirds of Americans are overweight. That's not true. Because they use a BMI of 25 as a demarcation line with the dis to describe people as, label them as overweight or not. When we know from all the blue zones and, long and, and studies where of centenarians that long-lived people always have BMIs below 23, not BMIs below 25. If we use the criteria of 23 as the right BMI, below 23, we have 88% of Americans are overweight. That leaves 12% of Americans have a normal weight. Did you follow that so far? Out of the 12% of Americans that are so-called a normal weight, most of them, more than 90%, either smoke cigarettes, alcoholics, drug addiction, depressed, autoimmune conditions, digestive disorders, you know, there's, in other words, they have some medical occult cancer, serious illness later in life, there's some medical reason why they're a normal weight or why they're, why they're slim, slim. It's only two, about 2% 2 of Americans are at an ideal weight because they eat and live a healthful life. Did you follow that? I hope you become that 2%. That's the whole point. You have to earn good health. You can't buy it. Doctor can't give it to you. Can't purchase it in the drugstore or the health food store. It's a fun experience, though, achieving it. That's a delicious experience, achieving it, because as you get healthier, your taste and smell improves, too. And food tastes better, and your taste changed. Now, my Andy scoring system is not the most foundational part of this program. It's just a tool to help people immediately recognize that green vegetables are super high in nutrients per calorie. And it works. It helped people in Whole Foods Market and other supermarkets spent, buy more green vegetables. When they put the numbers on foods, people bought more of those foods. It's just a tool to help motivate people to eat healthier. That's all. Doesn't mean everything. But you can see how oil and bread and chicken and white bread are relatively low in nutrients. They're just empty calories. What I'm saying right now is a piece of chicken is like a piece of white bread, like a bagel. Why am I saying a, pe a piece of chicken is like a bagel? Could somebody please volunteer that for me, please? Why? Why am I saying a piece of chicken is just like a bagel? Right. Because neither one contains a significant load of micronutrients. They're both rich sources of calories or macronutrients with no significant amount of micronutrients. They contain carcinogens, of course. There's like, there's like um, what do they call it, um, flame retardant chemicals in chicken from the, the bedding of the chickens. You know, and, they, and, there's, and there's potassium bromate, which is a class 2 carcinogen in the white bread, but, this, but I'm not even talking about those things. I'm just talking about the fact that they're rich sources of calories with no nutrients in them. But you know what? The... the the rating of foods is not the only important part of it because some foods, the Andy scoring system is not the only thing you need to know because some foods don't score that high on the Andy score because they don't contain such a high level of all those different micronutrients. 
Like mushrooms, for example. Mushrooms don't score very high in the Andy score because they don't contain all the B vitamins and they don't contain all those minerals. You know, they're, they're not super high in nutrients. But mushrooms are a very powerful food to fight cancer because they're very high in particular phytochemicals that have specific properties that protect against breast cancer and prostate cancer. So they're a superfood. So I'm just making clear that you don't think the Andy system is everything because there's other factors that we have to consider here. You follow what I'm saying right now? Flax seeds may not have the highest score in the Andy scoring system because they might be as rich in nutrients as green vegetables are, but they have impeccable, powerful breast cancer and prostate cancer protective nutrients in them. The lignans, right? So it's important. So the G-bombs is that acronym I made up. The, the G-bomb stands for greens and beans and onions and mushrooms and berries and seeds, right? Those particular nutrients are those particular foods that I want you to eat each day because each one of these foods individually has properties that powerfully protect against cancer. So each one of them is shown when you eat them, it reduces risk of cancer by more than 50%. But what if we put together a diet style with a full portfolio of all those foods that protect against cancer, and we try to eat all those cancer protective foods in our dietary portfolio? Then the effects is that they work synergistically to wipe out cancer and to protect your body and your brain. And you know what? is so important here and so critical and so valuable is that the same diet style that extends human lifespan, the same diet style that maximally enables us to live to be 100 years old in great health, is therapeutically effective when we apply it to people that are sick to get well. Now their high blood pressure goes back to normal, their diabetes reverses, their heart disease melts away, right? their depression gets better, their asthma goes away, their autoimmune conditions like psoriasis and colitis and rheumatoid arthritis goes away. Therapeutically, eating the right foods and the right type of diet that maximizes human lifespan helps people reverse disease and early stage cancers are able to, be, we can see early stage cancers reverse themselves, which I've had so many in my practice, people with early stage cancers and, as, and there are studies on this as well. And the chance of getting cancer recurrence goes down. For example, there was a study on, on women who took flax seeds. They weren't eating a healthy diet. They just tracked how much lignans from flax seed they ate. And I'm going to show you that study later. And they found they followed them for 10 years. Thousands of women, women followed for 10 years. And they found that those women who had more flax seed had some flax seed, just a small amount compared to those who had none, had a 71% decreased death, decreased death rate from cancer of those people who had cancer. 71% decreased death rate just from having that one little change of flax seeds, a little bit of lignin. They didn't even give them enough. They only gave them a third of a milligram when a teaspoon of flax seeds, just a teaspoon of ground flax seed, has seven milligrams. And they only had a third of a milligram. It still decreased the recurrence of cancer by 71%. And keep this in mind, that once you have cancer, the effects are going to be, in, going to be less. In other words, the earlier in life you start doing the right things, the more effective it is. If you wait till the cancer becomes more advanced and more advanced and more advanced, the longer you wait in life, the less effective the intervention is going to be. The earlier in life you start, better off to start as a child or as a, chi as a kid. That's when you get full protection. What I'm saying here, they're even shown to be protective when people already have cancer, which is a mere fraction of the power of those foods. 